Welcome to another edition of the Sports Web. I'm your host, Peter Blake. Thank you very much for checking in. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers fall to the Houston Texans 19-9. And going into this game, you would think that the Buccaneers had an advantage against the Texans. But it was just the opposite from Sunday's game. I'll give you my three thoughts. Number one thought. You would think that a Buccaneer defense that played so well versus the New Orleans Saints would have a distinct advantage over the Texans, considering that Houston was missing Arian Foster, that Ryan Mallow was starting his fourth game, that the offensive line was beat up, yet this defense allowed Alfred Blue to be the next Arian Foster. In fact, he rushed 31 times for 139 yards and one touchdown. Ryan Mallow had so much time he was contemplating why he couldn't play the Bucs every game, and this defense only had one sack versus an injury-riddled offensive line. Was this the same defense that played against the Saints a couple weeks ago? Not on Sunday it wasn't. The number two point, you would think that an offensive line that had a disadvantage with J.J. Watt, Davian Clowney, and Vince Wilfork, but they allowed no sacks on Sunday versus that defense, that this offense would pick them up by scoring more than nine points. Yet it didn't happen. And if you look inside the numbers, you can see why. In fact, Jameis Winston, 17 for 36, one touchdown, one interception he threw for 261 yards. Now, if you want to blame Winston, that's fine. But look more inside the numbers. And what you're coming to find out is that the receivers dropped 11 passes. It can't happen. The number one wide receiver, Mike Evans, dropped four of those. Unacceptable. And the Buccaneers were so great at third down by converting one of 12. That's the reason why this offense wasn't consistent on Sunday. In fact, the only thing that's been consistent about the Buccaneers this year is double-digit penalties. You know, I gave them a nickname last week, the Suicide Squad. We're going to have to change that to Self-Destruct Bucks because that's exactly what they were on Sunday. And my third point, and this is my favorite one. You would think after a kicker kicks a 58-yard field goal, by the way, the second longest field goal in Buccaneer history by Kyle Brenza, that he would be able to make a 30- or 40-yard field goal. Yet after that, he missed four field goals, including an extra point. He left points out on the board, gave momentum to the Texans, and that's one of the reasons why the Buccaneers lost. Instead of Brenza making history, if he can't start making these kicks, he's going to be history. And again, going into this game, I thought the Buccaneers had an advantage. But after watching Sunday's performance, I don't know what to think. For another edition of the Sports Web, I'm Peter Blake, giving you something to think about. Do you think we could improve our play against the Carolina Panthers on Sunday?